a few days ago I found this Power Mac G5 on Facebook Marketplace for only 50 euros so I decided to take it home and to check if it's still usable for music applications. And the first thing I wanted to do is to upgrade it to the latest operating system which is OS X uh, Leopard. And first of all you need to find an image for your operating system and then to copy onto a bootable USB. So here I am formatting a USB pen drive a normal formatting, just make sure you format it as Apple Partition Map, otherwise it will not boot. Don't try any other option because it will only work and boot if it's formatted as Apple Partition Map. So this is going to take a few seconds. And then when everything is finished, you need to create a new partition. So you simply go to Partition and create a new partition for the image uh, to be installed. So you click on the plus button and then you can, of course, resize the partition. You will only need about 8 or 9 gigabytes because it's a DVD image. So let's create a new partition called USB boot and let's give a size of, of about 12 gigabytes. And again, the partition process will only take a few seconds. And after the partition has been created, you need to restore the DVD image for OS X uh, Leopard. So you click on Restore, you browse to the image you want to restore on it. So I'm taking the ISO for uh, Leopard 1.5.6 and then simply click Restore. And in this case, the restore process will be a little bit longer because you will need about between 15, 20 minutes or up to half an hour maybe. And by the way, I needed to perform the restore operation on my old MacBook from 2009 because here I am on my new Mac M2 in using Sequoia and if I try to restore any kind of ISO image on a new partition, it will always fail. If you have a solution, please just write it in the comments uh, because I, I really couldn't find a way to restore a partition on my Mac M2 using Sequoia. And before proceeding, I decided to have a new SSD hard drive. Uh, it's a simple 128 gigabyte uh, SSD. And I had a spare uh, HDD, uh, a very old HDD, which is 500 gigabytes. And I decided to have it as a secondary hard disk and uh, for storage. We can now boot from the USB key and you can do that by starting in open firmware mode, which is obtained by clicking uh, command option and O and F all together. And if you are lucky enough, this system will boot into open firmware. And when you are into open firmware, you might want to type dev alias, and this will simply list all the aliases that are defined on your Power Mac and you should find an alias called UD which is probably the USB device and you need to boot into that. And in order to boot from USB you need to type this command and simply substitute the X in the video with the actual number of your USB port and since the Power Mac has multiple ports you will probably need a little bit of trial and error in my case it was port number four. Installation will start and you will probably have again to format your hard disk because my hard disk in this case was not formatted properly and again a Power Mac G5 will need to be formatted as Apple Partition Map so you need to read the instruction and then go and format. Let's see how to do it. And from the same installation window you simply go to Utilities and then click on Disk Utility and then you will be able to format your new hard disk. And again, just remember that the disk needs to be partitioned and formatted using Apple partition maps. And after the format is completed, you should now be able to install your new operating system onto your new hard disk. And the installation will probably last about half an hour or so. And when the install finishes, you should be able to boot into the new copy of your OS X installation. And let's see how it behaves with some audio applications. And here you, you can see Reason 4 in action. It's a very old copy, of course. 
is the one I could find and I still have a license for it. So let's simply launch it. Uh, I don't have a proper audio card at the moment, so you will not hear any sound because the, the internal sound speakers is, are really cr crappy. And you see the application launches and it's quite responsive as well. You can move things around without any, any additional lagging. It's quite fluid uh, in my opinion. I also found a very old copy of Logic Express 7, which of course can run audio units plugins. And let's see some of the plugins that they have found. And for example, Alchemy from Camel Audio, for which I still have the original license, by the way. And it still loads pretty well. And of course, it's play, it still plays well. Or we can still load something like Massive, for example. And again, this will play very well. And let's also try a standalone application like, for example, Chip Sound by Plug. And again, you see it can be loaded and played really well.